industry inside a nutshell. The show where we sail into our port of call discussing maritime history. I've been planning to make today's video in a long, long time and with Titanic Month, I thought it was a good excuse to get all of this done. Well, not quite. You see, this video was requested by today's narrator, Barry, and um, when she requested this topic, I thought, oh, okay, let, let's just do something about it. So I did it, and I done some of the research on top. Well, I had a little bit of help, but I did some of the research, and then I sent it to her to see what she thought of it before I decided to go on a search for a narrator. But I never thought in a million years that Barry would narrate the video that she requested herself, and I would like to give a massive thank you to Barry for narrating the video as well as suggesting it and you can find Barry on her channel on Airy Berry True Crime and Airy Berry as well on her main channel where you can find loads of different videos including her true crime videos where she solves mysteries and I have been a guest on her channel before and it's also a massive honour to have Barry back as usual and I would also like to give a big Big massive thank you to Tony from the Historic Travels Group and George Behe to help me with the research for the video as well. Structural Integrity Failure Titanic Modern Breakups When the wreck of the Titanic was discovered in 1985, the world was excited. Eventually, the media was on the scene, and since then, the Titanic became the subject of many headlines. But upon her discovery, it was noticed that the ship had split in two, with the pieces lying 600 metres apart from each other. This led to confusion and speculation, and it continues in books, TV, film, and on social media platforms like YouTube. In this video, we are going to be looking into the wreck and the breakup theories that have been brought to the surface. Now, it should be pointed out that because of time, we aren't going to cover all the theories. Honestly, there have been multiple videos on them, mainly the theories that have been shared between 1986 and 2012. However, we are going to be looking into theories from the modern era, from 2012 to 2023. We are going to go into an amount of detail focusing on the timeline between 2am and 2.20am on the 15th of April 1912. But each theory is based on personal opinion through research, technology and experiments. Many historians, professors and writers have shared what they feel could explain what happened to the Titanic in between those times. So, although we might not know, these theories could be the closest we might get to answering the big question. How did the Titanic separate in two? Introduction On 14th of April 1912, at 11.40pm, the Titanic struck an iceberg and sank at 2.20am. The event took two and a half hours. But to understand the theories we're going to look into, we need to understand the timeline of the breakup, which happened in the last three minutes of the Titanic's time above the ocean. From the divorce of the bow and stern to the moment she disappears. At roughly 2.18am on the 15th April 1912, the Titanic split into two pieces, while an estimated 1,500 people were on board. The ship plunged into complete darkness, but since there were no lights on or off the Titanic, passengers and crew in the lifeboats found it difficult to tell what was going on. From further research, based on survivor accounts from the book On a Sea of Glass, around 7.5% of survivors, that's 53 out of over 700, claim they saw the Titanic break up, while 21% of survivors said that they either didn't know what happened to the ship or they didn't see the ship sink. These were calculated through the testimonies of survivors during the British inquiry into the disaster. However, the British inquiry concluded that the ship sank in one piece. This created controversy for 73 years before the wreck was found. When the theories began, people started forming opinions on what happened to the structure of the Titanic and how it created stress to the keel and double bottom, where the hull was ruptured at the section between the second and third funnels. In this video of the theories, we are going to look into theories from Richard Wojtarich, Roy Mango, 
George Behe, Tad Fitch, J. Kent Layton, Bill Wormstedt, and Samuel Halpern. Which theory do you agree with? Share your thoughts in the comments. Richard Wojterich and Roy Mengo. In April 2012, computer engineer and Marine Forensics Committee member Professor Richard Wojterich published an article on his theory of the breakup in Scientific American. In the article, Wojterich had written a paper on the Titanic breakup where he re-examined survivor accounts to understand what may have happened in the run-up to the 100th anniversary of the sinking. Co-authoring with Roy Mengo, the pair agreed that the bottom structure of the Titanic failed when it tilted up at a round 17 degree angle. Co-authoring with Roy Mengo, the pair agreed that the bottom structure of the Titanic failed when it tilted up at a round 17 degree angle. The failure spread across the breadth, then upwards. The authors didn't give a full name for the failure, but it is believed it could have started at the double bottom of the ship, or Boiler Room 1. The disintegration from the boiler room and up to the shell plating, which led to torn cabin rooms A36-37, to spread forward and aft, maybe along the riveted longitudinal seams, forming the separate pieces of the double bottom. When the Titanic broke in half, the buoyancy forces took over holding up part of the ship. When the stern came back down into the water, the paper continues. At that point, the two halves of the ship were held together by the uppermost strength decks and by the double thickness side shell plating. The outlines of the two double bottom pieces that broke away from the ship are indicated. The deck house is shown opening up at the aft expansion joint, but the split in the deck house was an effect, not a cause, of the hull break. When water poured into the engine room, and as the bow continued flooding, it pulled down on the forward of the stern. Eventually, the sections, bow and stern, broke, plunging the bow down to the ocean floor. Wojtowicz and Mengo then mentioned the big piece, giving it as key evidence to prove that the stern listed to port suddenly. Why? Well, according to them, the starboard side may have failed first, which left the flooded bow section to pull down on the port side of the stern section until they separated. This left the stern to float on its own, standing nearly vertical before disappearing from the ocean surface. They say their theory on the breakup comes from photographs of missing pieces. However, this isn't the only time the words missing pieces were mentioned when scientists put forward their theory that during the breakup, the Titanic split into three pieces and sank five minutes before the estimated time that was thought, an estimated time of 2.15am. They noticed the way the keel bent at the ends of the bow and stern in their form shape, indicating that they failed first and not last. This includes the twists and bends before the breakup occurred. They also turned their attention to the big piece, since Wojterich and Mengo believed that it failed along three distinct angles and formed part of the temporary hinge, which the stern section bent, first downward, then upward. Speculating if the ship broke from the top down beforehand, they mentioned the behaviour of the riveted joints, explaining that the bottom wasn't strong, and because of the way the uppermost strakes, strips, of plating were constructed, they had more strength. The high stresses around the deckhouse expansion joints, previously believed to have been the starting point, turned out to be a red herring. The deckhouse was made of lightweight plating and carefully constructed so as not to share in the structural loads on the ship. They also identified potential weak spots through a computer model of a portion of the double hull while looking at the condition of the wreck and survivor testimonies. They concluded that it started at the upper edges, slightly based on Park Stevenson's theory. While it could be possible, one could argue if the big piece had played a role at all. Sure, the big piece came from sea deck between cabins 79 and 81. Sure, the big piece came from sea deck between cabins 79 and 81. But when the breakup's location is aft of the third funnel deck house, it is questionable. However, that doesn't mean it should be brushed off since a lot of research went into it. In this case, it looks like it may be of it did or it didn't happen theory. George Behay, Tad Fitch, J. Kent Layton, and Bill Wormstead. Considered by many people as the Holy Grail, the book on a sea of glass gives readers a close account of the life and death of the White Star Liner. This includes the timeline of the ship's sinking, 
but it goes into greater detail with the breakup. With their theories, they looked into several accounts that mentioned the breakup. This included 3rd Officer Pittman, 2nd Officer Charles Lightola, Archibald Gracie, and Lawrence Beasley. With these accounts from books and accounts from survivors, Behe, Fitch, Leighton, and Wormstead put together a series of investigations and computer recreations. In conclusion, the men believed that the scenario of the breakup went like this. At 2.05am, the Titanic was about 7 degrees down by the head, with an approximate 10 degree list to port. 10 minutes later, the ship's trim increased to 10 degrees up on the port, as the head sank deeper and deeper into the water. In addition, Behe said in his own words, saying in my own opinion, based on survivor accounts, is that the Titanic stern rose to roughly a 30 degree angle before the breakup occurred, and that the free floating stern section later rose to almost a vertical position before going down. What Behe was referring to was the final plunge, which occurred at 2.16am. When it happened, the keel and structures near the third funnel base bent, building up stress before rising higher. At that moment, Titanic was at 23 degrees. With survivors claiming to hear rumbling noises, the tension and compression stresses work on the ship further, and the expansion joint cracks before the ship split. As it does, the keel pushes the engines up, which split the Titanic into four sections. The aft and forward towers, the stern and bow sections. The Titanic then initially breaks in front of the third funnel. The stern section slowly settles back into the water, with the main sections, which are the towers. The emergency lights go out as the ship emits a dark red flame-like glow. The remaining funnels, the third and fourth, the first two fell before the breakup. The stern continues to settle back. Additional strain around the aft expansion joint caused it to fail, and the forward tower broke off and crashed into the ocean. The aft tower remains attached to the stern. It settles back for about a minute. At 2.18am, the stern begins to rise again. The keel pulls the stern to an 85-90 to 90 degree angle before descending onto the ocean floor. The Titanic disappears at 2.20am. The theory was mentioned in a video of the real-time sinking, directed by Tom Linsky from Part-Time Explorer, with the animation created by HFX Studios. Although this might be the closest we might get to know about the theory, according to Tom Linsky, an updated video would come in the future. So maybe on Part-Time Explorer, a third breakup theory would come to light. Samuel Halpern George Simons was one of Titanic's lookouts. He survived the disaster and managed to board lifeboat number one. The lifeboat was a quarter of a mile away from the ship, and in the British Inquiry, Simons explained the final moments of the Titanic. Her foremost lights had disappeared under the water, and her starboard side light left burning was the only light, barring the masthead light on the side of the bridge that I could see. You could not see her keel. You could just see the propellers. I stood and watched it till I heard two sharp explosions in the ship. What they were, I could not say. Then... She suddenly took a top cant. Her stern came well out of the water. Then she took a heavy cant and her bow went down clear, head down. And that is the time when I saw her lights go out, all her lights. The next thing I saw was her poop. As she went down like that, so her poop righted itself and I thought to myself, the poop is going to float. It could have been more than two or three minutes after that her poop went up straight as anything. There was a sound like steady thunder as you hear an ordinary night at a distance, and soon she disappeared from view. Simons then went further into detail, saying, Her head was going well down. Her stern was well out of the water. It righted itself without the bow. In my estimation, she must have broken in half. I should think myself it was about after the expansion plate. I should say it would be about a beam of the after funnel, or a little forward. I saw the poop right itself. It went up and disappeared from view. From his testimony, historian Samuel Halpern theorises in his book Centennial Reappraisal, he explains from Simon's description. Just before the ship lost longitudinal stability, 
The bow of the ship forward of the bridge was underwater, while the stern was high enough so that the ship's propellers were visible to those in the boats. Just before the ship lost longitudinal stability, the bow of the ship forward of the bridge was underwater, while the stern was high enough so that the ship's propellers were visible to those in the boats. Suddenly, two sharp cracks that sounded like explosions to some were heard, and the ship dipped further down by the water. Then, all the lights on the ship went out as the stern settled back to a point where it almost righted itself. The part of the ship ahead of the vicinity of the fourth funnel was now completely gone. Within two or three minutes, the forward end of the remaining stern dipped downwards as its aft end came almost straight up in the air. Then, with a steady rumbling sound that was heard across the water, the stern slid down and sank below the surface. Halpin then continues with the thought two sharp cracks were heard as the bow gave in to the weight of the water, gravitating it down underneath the wave. When the breakup occurred, Halpin believes that when the ship became longitudinally unstable under the water, the bow section had pulled the stern further up out of the water until the stress on the hull gave way when a fracture had occurred. The stress could have caused the stern to go up at a 10 to 15 degree head trim angle. The force of the poop deck, the back of the stern, pulled up to a 30 degree angle before settling back. After returning to a horizontal position, the stern section begins to flood rapidly, possibly when the double bottom can't hold both ends anymore. The stern trims down to a relatively steep angle before the Titanic disappears from the ocean surface. This theory has been featured in video projects like Shingoji and Titanic Connections, and it could be the closest theory we might have to the breakup. Titanic Connections goes into greater detail about the breakup, pointing at the highest trim of 26 degrees. The ship splits slowly. The stern remains above the surface for five minutes. The water rips away the inner structure of the hull and damages the boilers and watertight compartments. And judging from the stern's position in the video, the front plunges before the end sticks at a nautical angle before sinking while turning at a port list angle. The stern sinks at a medium pace before it has gone underwater. In 10 years between these three theories, it is possible they may be up to date, but in truth, there might not be a conclusion to determine which theory is right or wrong. The breakup theories have come a long way since they began in 1986, and some continue to change over time. In time, there'll probably be more theories. Until then, we will just have to wait and see. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe for future videos. Until next time, this has been History Inside a Nutshell, departing from the dogs. Thank you so much for all of your support and enjoy the rest of your voyage.